Hello everyone, my name is Grace and I am one of the speaker here from Group 9, Set 9 and we will be conducting to you the lesson Global Migration. Before we proceed with our discussion for today, let us first define what is migration, what is human trafficking, and what is GDP. So, migration, it is the movement of people or person from one country, locality, place of residence, etc., to settle in another. An instance of this is that migration is first and foremost a normal human activity. Human beings have always moved from one country, locality, and or place of residence to settle in another, and that will be discussed later on. And now, let's define what is human tra trafficking? So human trafficking, it involves, no, um, it is a human trafficking, it is a recruitment or transportation or transfer or harboring or, of, or receipt of people through force, fraud, or deception. So basically saying human trafficking, it involves the use of force, fraud, or coercion to obtain some type of labor, labor or commercial sex act. Every year, millions of men, women, and children are trafficked worldwide. It, in, it's, it also includes in the United States. And last but not the least, we have gross domestic product or GDP. So gross domestic product or GDP, it is the total monetary or market value of all the finished goods and services pro produced in a country's borders. So in a simpler definition, GDP is a measurement that seeks to capture a country's economic output. Countries with larger GDPs will have a greater amount of goods and services generated within them and will generally have a higher standard of living. For this reason, many citizens and political leaders uh, see GDP growth as an important measure of national success, often referring to GDP growth and economic growth interchangeably. Due to various limitations, however, many economists have argued that GDP should not be used as a proxy for overall economic success, much less the success of a society. And that is all for our brief definition of what will be the topic for our global migration lesson. Let us now proceed with our lesson, Global Migration. And inside this topic, we will be going to define what is global migration, migration, the problem of human trafficking, integration, and benefits and detriments for descending countries. So now, what is global migration? So global migration, it is a situation in which people go to live in foreign countries, especially in order to find work. Most global migration is from developing countries to the developed ones. So the developing countries, let us first define what is developing country. So a developing country, those are countries that are less developed country or emerging market. They have lower gross domestic product than the developed countries with a less mature and sophisticated economy. So having gained independence, many of these countries, especially the smaller ones, were faced with the challenges of nation and institution building in their own for the first time. Due to this common background, many of these nations were developing in economic terms for most of the 20th century and many are still are. And what is developed country? So the developed country, they are also called as industrialized country and has a mature and sophisticated economy, usually measured by gross domestic product and or average income per residence. Developed countries have advanced technological infrastructure and have diverse industrial and service sectors. For example, the United States was the richest developed country on earth way back in 2021 with a total GDP of $23 trillion and China was the richest developing country on earth way back in 2021 also with a total GDP of 17.73 million. And now we are going to look at global migration and its impact on both sending and receiving country. As we all know, 
sending and receiving countries. Uh, for example, sending countries, those are countries where the migrants or the people really came from, where they are born. And the receiving countries is the destination where they migrate. Migration should not be considered as problematic because there is nothing moral or immoral about moving from one country to another because human beings have always been migratory. It is the result of their movements that areas get populated, communities experience diversity, and economies prosper. Thus, rather than looking at migration in terms of simplistic good versus bad lands, let us treat it as a complex social phenomenon that even predates contemporary globalization. And the next topic is about migration. There are two types of migration. We have internal and internal and international migration. Internal migration, which refers to people moving from one area to another within one country. And international migration, on the other hand, is in which people cross borders of one country to another. So the latter can be further broken down into five groups. So first, we have those who move permanently to another country. Those are what we call immigrants. And the second refers to workers who stay in another country for a fixed period, or maybe at least six months in a year. And we have also the third one, the illegal migrants, which comprise the third group. Those are the, what we call human trafficking. It is one of the example for the illegal migrants. While the fourth are those migrants whose family have petitioned them to move to a destination country. So petition immigrants, these are the what we call the petitioner in which a person is making a request of the government. In the context of immigration, this is a person who files an immigration form to request benefits on behalf of another person or the beneficiary. And the fifth one would be the refugees. They are also known as the asylum seekers. For example, those who are unable or unwilling to return because of a well-founded fear or persecution on account of race, religion, nationality, membership in a particular social group, or a political opinion. The demographers estimate that 247 million people are currently living outside the countries of their birth and 90% of them moved for economic reasons while 10% were refugees or asylum seekers. And the top three regions of our region are Latin America, which is 18% of the of global total, followed by the Eastern Europe and Central Asia, which, which is 16%. And the Middle East and North Africa, which is 14%. On a per country basis, India, Mexico, and China are leading with the Philippines together with the Afghanistan, only ranking sixth in the world. The top 10 country destinations of these migrants are mainly in the West and the Middle East, with the United States topping on the list. 50% of global migrants have moved from the developing countries going to the developed zones of the world and contribute anywhere from 40 to 80% of their labor force. Their growth has outstripped the population growth in the developed countries, such that today, according to the think tank, McKinsey Global Institute, first-generation immigrants constitute 13% of the population in Western Europe, 15% in North America, and 48% in the GCC countries. The majority of the migrants remain in the cities. So the percentage of migrants in cities are 92% in the United States, 95% in the United Kingdom, and 99% in Australia. Once settled, they contribute enormously to raising the productivity of their host country. The migrant influx has led to a debate in a destination country over the issue of whether migrants are assets or liabilities to national development. Anti-immigrant groups and nationalists argue that governments must control legal immigration and put a stop to illegal entry of foreigners. Many of these anti-immigrant groups are gaining influence through political leaders who share their beliefs. For example, it includes also U.S. President Donald Trump and U.L. Prime Minister Theresa May, who have been reversing the existing states. Most recently, 
Trump attempted to ban travel into the United States of people documentation. He also continues to speak about his election promise of building a wall between the United States and the Mexico. And that will be all for me and the other topic will be discussed by my other speakers. So now, let's talk about the benefits for the sending countries. Even if 90% of the value generated by the migrant workers remains in their host countries, they have sent billion backs, billions back to their home country. It is called remittance. What is remittance? Remittance is a non-commercial transfer of money by a foreign worker, a member of a diaspora community, or a citizen with a familial ties abroad for a household income in their home country or homeland. Remittance makes significant contributions to the development of small and medium firm industries that help generate jobs. Remittance has likewise changed the economic and social standing of migrants, as shown by new or innovative homes and the relative access to new consumer goods. The purchasing power of a migrant's family doubles and makes it possible for the children to start or continue their schooling. Everyone, um, my name is Olive Gay Dakwa, and I'm going to um, discuss uh, this topic. Determines for the migrant's home country. Um, first is brain drain, referred to the siphoning qualified personnel and removing young workers. So, nawawalan tayo ng workers. Um, example na lang sa atin dito yung mga teachers. Um, minsan talaga umaalis, pumupunta ng ibang bansa, hindi ba yung mga um, professional workers natin dito. And 50% of Filipinos who live or work in the developed world have their tertiary education. So usually, yung maalis, yung maalis talaga is yung mga um, college graduate. At minsan yung mga naiiwan sa atin dito ay yung mga undergraduate or hindi nakapagtapos ang pag-aaral. Um, siguro umaalis sila dahil mas malaki yung oportunidad na nakukuha nila doon sa ibang bansa kaysa dito. At malaki rin yung sahod na nakukuha nila doon. In 2006, 15% um, locally trained doctors from 21 Sub-Saharan African have migrated to United States or Canada. So 15% talaga yung locally trained doctors nila is umaalis, pumupunta sa United States or sa Canada at doon nagsisubisyo. Uh, meron namang naiwan sa Liberia na 43% yung mga doctors nila and 30, 30, rather, 30% sa Ghana and 21% naman sa Uganda. Governments are aware of this long-term handicap but have no choice but to continue promoting migrant workers as part of state policy because of the remittances impact on GDP. Dahil may pera, dahil may remittance na sa country, so even na they lost the workers, ini-encourage pa rin nila na magtrabaho sa ibang bansa dahil sa tax return or may pera din silang natatanggap dito. The sustainability of migrant-dependent economies will partially depend on the strength of these institutions. So first is Bureau of Manpower, Employment and Training in Bangladesh and Office of the Protector of Immigrants in Indian Labor Ministry and Philippine Overseas Employment in the Philippines. So nagdedepende sa kanila ang mga sustainability ng mga migrant-dependent economies natin kung naproprotektahan ba sila. For example, yung mga OFW natin. Halimbawa na lang, di ba? Meron talaga mga abuse na nangyayari sa mga migrant workers, kagaya na lang ng mga um, OFW sa Middle and Eastern countries, depending on how these institutions support and um, protect our workers. What does human trafficking? Human trafficking is the action or practice of illegal transporting people from one country or area to another, typically for the purpose of forced labor for sexual exploitation. On top of the issue of brain drain, Sunday states must likewise protect migrant workers. The United States Federal Bureau of Investigation lists human trafficking as the third largest criminal activity worldwide. In 2012, the International Labor Organization, or ILO, identified 21, mil 21 million men, women, and children as victims of forced labor, and appealing three out of every 1,000 persons worldwide. 
The first one is the act, or what is done. It is done through recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring, or receipt of person. The second one is the means, or uh, the means, or how it is done. Treat or use of force, coercion, abduction, fraud, deception, abuse of power, or vulnerability, or giving payments or benefits benefits to a person in control of the victim. The third one is exploited purpose, how why it is done. For the purpose of exploitation, which includes exploiting the prostitution of others, sexual exploitation, forced labor, slavery, or, sem or similar practices, and the removal of organs. So now, let's talk about the three types of human trafficking. The first one is sex trafficking. A criminal activity where one or more persons are subjected to be engaging in commercial sexual activity through the use of force, fraud, or coercion. Number two, forced labor refers to situations in which persons are coerced to work through the use of violence or intimidation, or by more subtle means such as accumulated debt, detention of identity papers, or threats of denunciation to immigration authorities. Number three, debt bondage, also known as debt delivery, bonded labor, or penage is the pledge of a person services as a security for the repayment for a debt or other obligation. According to the U.S. Department of State, forced labor is the biggest sector of human trafficking in the world. What is the main problem of human trafficking? Poverty is one of the largest contributors to human trafficking. It can drive people to become traffickers. It can drive parents to sell their children or other family members into slavery. Everyone, um, my name is Olive K. Dakwa and I'm going to um, discuss uh, this topic. So we're going to tackle about integration. So what is integration? First, integration is an act of the immigrants to resemble the culture of the native-born of the country that they have migrated in. So since migrants should be able to interact with their new home countries, there are considerable variations in their economic integration, which is applying for citizenship. So napaka-importante talaga when we migrated to other countries, we need to apply citizenship. Second is adapting with the linguistic and ethnic customs. So we need to adapt the um, kung ano yung mga salitang ginagamit ng mga tao na nandoon dahil makakatulong ito kung paano tayo um, makipag-interact sa kanila at kung at kung paano tayo makipag-communicate sa mga tao na, na nandoon. And then second ay uh, third is abiding by the policy changes to address integration problems. So, we need to, um, kailangan natin sundin kung ano yung mga policy changes na nangyayari doon sa bansang um, minamigrate natin. And then, based din sa, um, sa file na nabasa ko is, the migrants from China, India, Western Europe are often more success while the, um, those from Middle East, North Africa, and Sub-Saharan African Africa, rather, is nahihirapan sila to secure a job. Um, United States also and Singapore, there are two types of um, Filipino workers, which is the blue-collar man or manual workers and the white-collar or the office workers. Um, depending on the situation that they get into, nag-integrate or nagiging part sila ng, kanang, ng community ng mga lugar na pinupuntahan nila. Difficulties in adapting and accepting. So, linguistic difficulties, um, customs from the old country, different religions, may create cleavage between migrants and citizens of receiving countries. So, nagkakaroon talaga ng mga um, problema ang mga, uh, minsan talaga nagkakaroon talaga ng problema yung mga migrants, immigrants natin na in, um, in terms of ling linguistic, in terms of linguistic dahil Minsan talaga, hindi naman talaga madali na um, ma-adapt yung language na ginagamit ng um, lugar na minamigrate natin, di ba? So, kailangan siya ng, um, um, kailangan siya ng pag-aralan muna bago natin um, matutunan kung ano yung mga language na ginagamit nila. And the lack of integration gives xenophobic and 
anti-immigrants group more ammunition to argue that these new citizens are often not national. So, so nagkakaroon ng xenophobic, xenophobic or mm, having, having or showing um, a dislike against people or prejudice against people that um, against people from other countries. So, nagkakaroon talaga ng ganitong um, um, ganitong case if there's a lack of integration. So, meron din namang issues that um, yung mga kung saan yung mga um, immigrants workers, they are, te- uh, they are tend to keep among themselves kasi siguro na-experience sila ang anxiety. Um, kasi bago pa yung lugar na um, bago pa yung lugar na nilipatan nila so which is um nag siguro nabab, nababaguhan sila sa lugar sa mga bagay especially sa mga tao na i-integrate nila kaya um they keep um they sell uh, they they keep themselves na lang um to isolate themselves rather dahil dahil nga siguro may um baka may, meron sa mindset nila na baka malagay sila sa um, hindi mabuti situation and the last is addressing integration problems so government and private business had made policy changes to address integration problems like using multiple languages in state documents so para um, para mas solusyonan yung problema ng ay yung problema sa integration is the government and private sectors had made policy changes. So, nag, so yung may mga country na gumagamit ng um, hindi lang isang lingwahe dahil hindi ba hindi ba meron rin po, hindi ba naging kabilang rin sa problema yung um, linguistic um, difficulties. So, kagaya na lang sa um, kagaya na lang sa US. So, dalawa yung language na ginagamit nila which is um, Spanish or English. And meron rin namang, um, there are also um, training programs um, complemented with counseling have also helped migrant integration dun sa, um, guys, dun sa Germany. So, gumagawa sila ng training program para, um, para, ma- um, para kahit pa paano is masolusyonan kung ano yung um, common problems na hinaharap ng mga migrants. Thank you everyone for sticking out with us. That would be all our presentation and our discussion for today's lesson, Global Migration.